Welcome dear learners. Today we are going to discuss about Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974. So the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act was enacted in 1974 to provide for the prevention and control of water pollution and for the maintenance and restoring the wholesomeness of the water in country. This act is for the prevention and control of water pollution and uh, the maintenance and restoring the wholesomeness of water for establishment with a will to carry out purpose uh, that have been, um, I mean, uh, for the aforesaid for, of the boards for the prevention and control of water pollution. So this act was basically amended in 1988 after its enactment in 1974 then in uh, 1977 the water prevention and control of pollution cess act basically to provide levy and collection of cess on water consumed by persons operating or uh, carrying on certain types of industrial activities so this cess is collected with the view to augment the resources of the central board and state pollution control boards for the prevention and control of water pollution constituted under the Water Prevention and Control of uh, Pollution Act 1974. And uh, at the latest, this act was amended in 2003. So, what are the main objectives of this act? Why this act has been uh, established? Basically, to provide for the prevention and control of water pollution and maintaining the or restoring the wholesomeness uh, of the environment. So it is basically uh, the maintenance of quality of both surface as well as underground water. Uh, surface and underground water are the main sources of the water that are consumed by various sectors like uh, the major consuming sector is agriculture then industry and domestic sectors then uh, the second objective of this act is, is to establish central and state pollution control boards for the prevention and control of water pollution basically these boards they work in uh, their jurisdictions uh, for example state pollution control boards work in uh, the prescribed states and the central is the central coordinating board which coordinates with the state pollution control boards for uh, the prevention and control of water pollution then the another objective is to provide uh, for conferring uh, on assigning uh, to such boards powers and functions relating to and for matters connected therewith and uh, then to provide for the penalties and uh, contraventions of the provision of act and last one is to establish center and state water testing laboratories that are centrally or at the state level accredited by the various accrediting agencies like the state pollution control boards so to enable the boards to access uh, the extent of pollution lay down the standards and uh, establish guilt and default so these were the main objectives of the water pollution and uh, prevention and pollution uh, control of pollution act 1974 so in act there is the uh, there are various chapters uh, from 1 to 8 and uh, various chapters are dealing on various uh, criteria. So the arrangement of sections is from 1 to 64 uh, between the various chapters. Uh, for example, for chapter 1 is dealing with the preliminary, basically the definitions, the words which have been used in the act have been uh, discussed under two sections, section 1 and 2. And the chapter second discusses about the central and state pollution control, uh, state uh, pollution control boards for the prevention and control of water pollution from section 3 to 12. There are various activities and uh, powers that have been discussed under these sections. 
and in uh, chapter 3 there have been provisions for joint boards from chapter 13 to 15 basically the joint boards between the central and state pollution control boards and in chapter 4 the powers and the functions of the boards have been framed under the section 16 and 18 16 to 18 and chapter 5 discusses about the prevention and control of water pollution from section 19 to 33 and various funds, accounts, audits that are carried out have been discussed in chapter 6 under section 34 to 40. And the penalties and the procedures uh, have been framed under the section 7, uh, uh, under the chapter 7, uh, under the section 41 and 50, 41 to 50. And miscellaneous other activities uh, that have been discussed in the chapter uh, 8 under section 51 to 64. <coughs> so these were the arrangements of the sections under the Water Pollution Control uh, Act 1974. So what is all about this Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act? It is basically the prohibition of disposal of polluting matter to a stream or a well or a river or a sewer uh, or on land is the key to the regulatory system under the act basically there is a prohibition for disposal of certain kind of the sewer lines or the wastewater into the streams wells so here in streams and wells it discussed about both surface as well as groundwater and then no person shall knowingly cause or permit poisonous and noxious nox, noxious or polluting matter to enter the stream or well or sewer land so this is self explanatory there is the prohibition and uh, there is uh, kind of uh, the limitation uh, for any person uh, to discharge such kind of pollutants into the water streams and its violation is against public interest because the water is a public property and it will attract penalty and consequence means there are and knowledge about the said uh, offense or I mean the are important basically you can lead to the criminal proceedings if uh, one violates maybe it is an individual or an industry that violates this act and uh, but the prohibition is not absolute it's not like we cannot discharge the wastewater into the streams but there are some procedures how to do so the law allows to discharge the pollutants into the water after their treatment so the treated wastewater there are certain criteria that the certain parameters in the water should not exceed the limits that have been framed by the uh, state pollution control boards or central pollution control boards for example the criteria may be uh, chemical oxygen demand biological oxygen demand certain chemicals or heavy metals that should not be more than the prescribed limit it is different for the industrial wastewater and the domestic wastewater and also it is different where we are going to discharge this wastewater whether we are going to discharge into the land or water body or in any other receiving water bodies so this also uh, i mean uh, in this act no person without obtaining the consent from the state boards established under the act basically the boards which have been established under the water act that is state pollution control boards no person will uh, i mean uh, establish any kind of industry without obtaining consent from such boards which are likely to discharge cbh and trade effluents for example if we are going to establish a tannery that creates the uh, discharge that creates the wastewater that generates the wastewater and this wastewater goes to the racing water bodies so for establishing the tanneries or certain kind of industries which generate the wastewater should get consent from the state pollution control boards otherwise uh, they are doing a violation to the water act and uh, an application for obtaining consent 
or certain con consent of the boards have been made by the person who intends to the establishment of industry. So this consent is to be taken by the person, concerned person who uh, is uh, intending to create or uh, establish the any kind of the industry or um, treatment plant. So the violation of this may lead the withdrawal of consent and prosecution. So if any person violates the certain uh, parameters and uh, he or she discharges the wastewater, which has parameters more than the prescribed limit uh, under this act can uh, lead to the withdrawal of the consent from the boards and also can lead to the criminal proceedings, that is the prosecution against such industries and person or any kind of operation of an industry. So how this act works? So first is uh, we should understand that the water is a state subject. So all the, I mean, uh, the rules and regulations that have to be executed by the uh, state uh, government or state pollution control boards. So this has been discussed uh, under the schedule one and uh, schedule, um, I mean, uh, on schedule uh, seven of the constitution of India entry 17 and therefore only state governments have powers to make enactment or rules or to establish pollution control boards for the prevention and control of pollution on that in that state so the for example if the state of uh, west bengal is uh, have only powers to create the pollution control boards which can uh, control the pollution and the prevention of the pollution only within the limits, political limits of the West Bengal state. So these boards have no work or they have no jurisdiction in other states. So the parliament have had no powers to enact legislation or rules or to establish pollution control boards on such matter unless desired by two or more states enabling the parliament to make laws for the states uh, that is discussed under the article 252 so if more than two states uh, approach the parliament then only the parliament can make the rules for the state pollution control boards or for the state for establishing the state pollution control boards so the second one uh, of this part is the parliament can also legislate the uh, how the parliament will get the powers first is when more than two states will approach the parliament second is if uh, the parliament can only make uh, the rules or establish establish the pollution control boards with respect to water in the state in the national interest if Rajya Sabha decided not less than by two-third majority of the present and voting if it get two-third majority in the Rajya Sabha, then only they can enact the rules for the State Pollution Control Board under the Article 249. So also the Parliament can legislate or make rules or establish pollution control boards with respect to the water in the state if proclamation of emergency is in operation in the said state. For example, there is if there is an uh, emergency in the state of Haryana, then the Parliament has the power to uh, establish pollution control boards in Haryana under the Article 250, only in case of emergency. In case of emergency, in case of there is two-third majority in Rajya Sabha, and if two more than two states approach, then only the parliament has a uh, right to make the, uh, I mean the, uh, I mean the rules or establish pollution control board in the states. So what are the members of the Central Pollution Control Board? Basically, this uh, the number of members have been discussed under the Section 3, uh, in which uh, it is discussed that there are 17 members. Uh, one is the full-time chairman that is nominated by the central government, having special knowledge or practical experience of uh, matters related to environmental protection, knowledge, or experience in administering institution dealing with the matters of environmental protection. So for one, first one is the, uh, the chairman. So there is uh, the scheme one plus five plus five plus three plus two plus one. 
so the first one is the chairman the five official named uh, nominated by the central government to be represent the central government so five official will be representing the central government and then other five official nominated by the central government from amongst the members of state boards so the central government can nominate five members from the state uh, boards of whom two shall be local authorities functioning within that states so uh, the three uh, should be non official nominated by the central government representing the interest of agriculture fishery industry trade other interest it ought to be represented in the opinion of the central government basically the uh, non officials that uh, are dealing with the various kinds of departments like agriculture fishery that are directly or indirectly related to the water so here it completes uh, the scheme 1 plus 5 plus 5 plus 3 and the other two nominated uh, are nominated by the central government to represent the companies or cor corporates which are owned controlled and managed by the central government so these uh, are the 1 plus 5 plus 5 then it comes 14 members 14 15 and 16 and one is the member secretary member secretary is appointed by the central government it is a full time possessing qualification knowledge and experience of scientific engineering or management aspects of pollution control so these all members are nominated by the central government for the central pollution control boards so you should remember the scheme 1 plus 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 so section 3 uh, of the uh, water pollution and prevention and control of pollution act 19, uh, 1974 uh, this uh, gives the this discusses the members of the pollution control board central pollution control board now the uh, state pollution control boards uh, the section 2 uh, plus section 4 uh, for the establishment uh, by the state government by notifying the official gazette to exercise the functions and powers assigned to it basically these two sections gives the powers to the uh, pollution control board uh, that powers are given to the state state pollution control board so here also the members of the boards are the 17 members 1 plus 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 so the first one is that is discussed up under the section 14 section 4 of the pollution act water pollution act so the first one is the chairman that is nominated by the state government having special knowledge same there in the central pollution control act uh, board act was in central pollution control board it was the central government that nominated the chairman here is it is the state government uh, which nominates the chairman which has special knowledge and uh, practical experience of the matter relating to the environmental protection and knowledge experience in administering the institution dealing with the matters of environmental protection then five members are the official nominated by the state government that represents the government basically and the file uh, five officials uh, nominated by the state government or from the local authorities uh, function within the state that also represents the state government and the three non-official uh, nominated by this uh, that are the members or uh, basically having the experience in agriculture fishery same like in the central pollution control board here also in state pollution control board same kind of but here uh, in the central there is a central government who nominates here it is a state government and the uh, last two are nominated by the that have, are from the co uh, companies or co corporates and the member secretary that is appointed by the state government is a full time possessing the qualification knowledge experience in, on scientific engineering same like in the central pollution control board so we have discussed it, the members of the central pollution control board now the functioning of this uh, central pollution control board under section 16 the main function is to promote cleanliness of the streams and wells in different areas of the states so it's basically a coordinating agency uh, that coordinates the activities between various state pollution control boards then other uh, activities are to advise central government on any matter concerning to the prevention and control of water pollution 
then it coordinates the activities of state boards and resolves disputes among them. There are various disputes regarding the water, uh, for example, water sharing and water pollution. And then it provides technical assistance and guidance to the state boards carrying out and sponsor investigation and research relating to the problems of water pollution, prevention, control, abatement of water pollution. So these are all the activities that the functions uh, basically of the CPCB. Further, it plans and organizes training uh, of person engaged or to be engaged in programs for the prevention, control and abatement of water pollution on such terms and conditions as the central board may specify. Basically, it is a discretionary power of the central board. What terms and conditions, on what terms and conditions, it may train or engage the persons for the prevention and control of water pollution. And it or also organizes, or uh, through mass media, a comprehensive program regarding prevention and control of pollution. Basically, on the national level, it coordinates the various activities that directly or indirectly leads for the prevention and control of the water pollution. And it also have uh, the power to collect, compile and publish the technical and statistical data relating to the water pollution and measures uh, devised for its effective prevention and control. Uh, through it uh, have the uh, annuals, it, uh, uh, it publishes the annuals like every year, reports codes, guidelines relating to treatment, disposal of sewage. So there are n number of activities regarding to the compilation and publishing of the data. This, uh, besides this, uh, it also lay down, modify an annual in con consultation with the state government for the concern the st standards for the streams. Basically the standards that uh, for the various parameters that have to be framed and it frames in consultation with the state governments. So it coordinates with the state government. And it plans and calls to be execution nationwide programs, nationwide awareness programs regarding the prevention and control of water pollution, and performs other activities that may be prescribed uh, in the law. So fixing the standards and the criteria. So what should it is a standard standard is a defined as a plan that established by a central or uh, uh, government authority as a program of prevention and control of water pollution standard is basically uh, various kinds of parameters uh, the this uh, parameter should be uh, on uh, this level in the water and uh, if that is more than that it is standard is less so it should be treated so criteria means a scientific requirement on which decision or judgment may be based concerning the suitability of water quality to support and designate use. Basically, there are the criteria of the water, like criteria A, B, C, D, and E. In each criteria, it gives uh, certain parameters like what is the BOD, what is the total coliforms, what is the I mean the nitrate con concentration. So it uh, makes the criteria this kind of category or this kind uh, if the criteria of waters uh, various uh, parameters are uh, in this uh, range so what kind of use uh, can be uh, I mean for what kind of use the water should be bringing in for example for the swimming for the bathing for the navigation for the irrigation so there are various criteria one uh, a b c d and e so uh, thus it is important to lay down water quality standards and criteria. So all these criteria are fixed under this act. So in section 24 of this act, prohibition on use of any poisonous, noxious or polluting matter into the stream or wells access to predetermined st standards. Basically, uh, if you can check my video on the water pollution, um, then I have mentioned the various kinds of the parameters that are present in the water uh, and the standards uh, like uh, what kind of standards uh, that has been prescribed by the CPCB and also uh, in comparison with the WHO. So uh, under this section no person shall knowingly cause per, uh, or be permitted or by 
uh, I mean, uh, causing the pollution to the water bodies. And uh, this I have discussed earlier. And no person shall knowingly cause or permit any matter which may lead, uh, which may tend to impede or obstruct the flow of water, like the plastic kind of pollution in the water that obstruct the flow of water. And last one is the penalty. Uh, under this act, the penalty under the section 43, penalty for the uh, contravention of the provision, uh, who uh, ever contravenes the provision of section 24 shall be punished, punishable with the imprisonment of the, uh, for the term, which shall not be less than one year or uh, and six months, but which may be extended to six years uh, and with fine. So these are the kind of punishments and other section 45A uh, penalty for contravention of the provision of this act to whoever contravenes any provision of act fails or fails to comply with any order or direction given under this act shall be punishable with imprisonment which may extend to three months or fine which may extend up to 10,000 or both. So it depends upon the uh, what kind of uh, the grievance, uh, what kind of the, I mean, the severity or seri uh, seriousness of the pollution is caused by any person, it can bring such kind of penalties uh, like uh, it may be three months or 10,000 fine or both. So it depends upon like it may be industry or it may be any households. So these were all the various kinds of the functions and activities. I hope you all enjoy uh, this uh, lecture. Thank you.